Hi everyone, this is Ms. Romani, and during this lesson we will learn how to use the Hardy-Weinberg equations to calculate allele and genotype frequencies in a population. Now, if you recall from previous lessons, one of the basic principles of Darwin's theory of natural selection is that genetic variation is the raw material upon which natural selection acts. And because of the work done by Gregor Mendel with pea plants, we now know that this genetic variation is manifested in the form of alleles, or different versions of the same gene, which are located, of course, in homologous chromosomes, one that came from mom and one that came from dad. And we also know that evolution is the result of changes in the allele frequencies of a population. So the idea of changing allele frequencies can be used to test whether or not a given population is evolving. If the allele frequencies change over time, then the population is evolving. If the allele frequencies in the population don't change, then the population is not evolving. But how can we know if allele frequencies in a population are changing or not? Well, to do that, we can use an algebraic equation that was discovered independently in 1908 by Godfrey Harold Hardy, a British mathematician, and by Wilhelm Weinberg, a German physician. And the algebraic equations that were formulated by these two men are what we call the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, or Hardy-Weinberg law. These are equations that can be used to quantify the genetic makeup of a population at equilibrium, that is to say, a population that is not evolving and it is not changing. So a population is said to be in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium if the allele frequencies remain constant throughout successive generations. We tend to use the Hardy-Weinberg equations as a model of what allele frequencies in a population will look like when there is no change in the population, when the population is not evolving, kind of like a null hypothesis to predict what it would look like when there is no change in the allele frequencies in a population. And it's important to understand that very rarely are natural populations ever in a Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium because the allele frequencies in natural populations are usually changing. But these equations are useful for detecting if indeed forces are acting on a population causing evolutionary change. So let's start by understanding what the equations are measuring. And let's say we have a population of 10 cats. It is a non-evolving population with cats with black fur and cats with white fur. And fur color in this cat population is controlled by a single gene with two alleles, with the black fur allele being dominant to the recessive white fur allele. And this is the allele distribution of the cats. Notice that the white cats are homozygous recessive, but the black cats are either homozygous dominant or heterozygous. So in this non-evolving cat population, the frequency of the dominant allele is going to be represented by the letter P. And the frequency of the recessive allele in the population is going to be represented by the letter Q. Since there are only two alleles for the fur color gene, the frequency of the black allele and the frequency of the white allele must add up to 1. That is, 100% of the alleles will be either big B or little b. So, P plus Q must equal 1. This is one part of the Hardy-Weinberg equation. P plus Q equals 1. So in this particular example, we have 10 cats, each with two copies of the gene. So there are a total of 20 copies of the gene in the population of cats. We can then count that 11 of the 20 copies of the gene are the big B allele, so a frequency of 11 divided by 20, so 0.55, or 55% of the alleles are the big B allele. And 9 of the 20 alleles are the little b allele, so 9 divided by 20, 0.45, or 45% of the alleles are the little b allele. So P and Q adds up to 1 because P plus Q equals 1. Now, let's look at the genotypes for this cat population. Since the big B allele is represented by the letter P, the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype in the population could be denoted as P squared. 
the frequency of the heterozygous genotype would be 2pq, and the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype would be denoted as q squared. Since these are the only three possible genotypes in the population, the frequency of all genotypes must add up to 1, or 100%. So, p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1, which is the second part of the Hardy-Weinberg equations. Now, for this non-evolving cat population, we can see that there are three homozygous dominant cats. So, since there are 10 cats, and three of them are homozygous dominant, the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype is 0.3, or 30%. There are five heterozygous black cats for a frequency of 0.5, and there are two white cats, so only two homozygous recessive cats for a frequency of 0.2. And once again, using Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, we can see that the three genotype frequencies add up to 1. Now, when problem solving using the Hardy-Weinberg equations, you may be asked to calculate the allele frequencies, the genotype frequencies, or the phenotype frequencies in a population. So to summarize, the allele frequency in a non-evolving population can be calculated using the equation P plus Q equals 1 where the dominant allele is represented by the letter P and the recessive allele is represented by the letter Q. The genotype frequency in a non-evolving population can be calculated using the equation P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1, where the homozygous dominant genotype is P squared, the heterozygous genotype is 2PQ, and the homozygous recessive genotype is Q squared. The phenotype frequencies refer to the physical trait. In this example, the frequency of white or black cats. And in this case, two of these 10 cats, or 0.2, are white. Eight out of the 10 cats, or 0.8, are black. When problem solving, we need to remember that the phenotype frequency of the recessive trait will be equal to the genotype frequency of homozygous recessive. That is because all homozygous recessive individuals will be white. However, just looking at the number of individuals with a dominant trait cannot tell you how many are homozygous dominant or heterozygous. To determine that, we need to use the Hardy-Weinberg equations. So let's practice Hardy-Weinberg problems. And let's start with the population of cats that we are now familiar with. We have two white cats and eight black cats. We are given the number of white and black cats and told that the black allele is dominant. We are then asked for both the allele and genotype frequencies. So let's recall our two equations. Now, I like to start Hardy-Weinberg problems by listing all the possible allele and genotype frequency variables. So the two allele frequencies are P and Q, and the genotype frequencies are Q squared, P squared, and 2pq. To solve this problem, I will start with a value that is known from the information given. I am told that 8 of the cats are black, which is their phenotype. But because black is a dominant allele, I can't know how many are homozygous dominant and how many of them are heterozygous. But I do know that two of them are white, so that means that two of them are homozygous recessive, which is q squared, and that's a frequency of 0.2. And so we have our first genotype frequency. Now since I know q squared, I can use that to calculate q, since the square root of q squared is q, which is 0.45. And now that I have q, I can easily calculate p, since p plus q equals 1, then 1 minus q will be p, which is 1 minus 0.45, or 0.55. And now I can calculate p squared, because I know the value of p. So that's 0.55 squared, or 0.3. And I can also calculate 2pq, because I know the values of both p and q. So by multiplying p times q times 2, we can get the heterozygous genotype frequency, 
which is calculated at 0 0.5. So the answers are all here. The allele frequencies are little b is 0 0.45, big B allele is 0 0.55, the genotype frequencies are 0 0.2 homozygous recessive, 0 0.3 homozygous dominant, and 0 0.5 heterozygous. Now, sometimes a question may not ask for the frequency, but for a specific number of individuals with, say, a particular genotype, like how many of the cats are heterozygous. To do that, you can just take the genotype frequencies that you've calculated and multiply it by the number of individuals. So in this case, 0 0.5 times 10, which tells us that 5 of the cats are heterozygous. So, okay. Now it's time for you to try this. So here's a problem similar to the one that we just worked on. I want you to pause the video and try to solve this on your own. And when you're done, on pause, and I will show you the answer. Okay, so this is how we solve this question. We know that 12 of the 100 cats are white. So they are homozygous recessive. That's a frequency of 0.12. We can then calculate the square root of Q squared to calculate the frequency of Q, which can be rounded to 0 0.35. We can use that value to calculate P, which works out to 0 0.65. And now we can calculate both P squared and 2PQ. Now the first question asked for the genotype frequencies, which are 0 0.12, 0 0.42, and 0 0.46. And you can use the second Cartier-Weinberg equation to check that those three genotype frequencies actually add up to one, which in this case they do. Now the second part of the question asks for the number of heterozygous individuals, and the answer for that one is the frequency of heterozygous cats times the number of cats in the population. So that means that 46 cats are heterozygous. So let's try a second problem. Pause the video again, work through the problem, and check back once you're done. This question gives you the value of P to start with. If we know P, we can calculate Q. Once we know Q, we can calculate Q squared. And because we know P, we can calculate P squared. And we can also calculate 2PQ. So using those frequencies, we can now calculate the number of plants in the population that are homozygous recessive, homozygous dominant, and heterozygous, which answers part A of the problem. Now for part B, we only need to calculate the number of red flowers, which is the number of homozygous dominant and heterozygous flowers added together, since we know that 20 flowers are homozygous recessive and that all of them are white, then we can answer that 480 plants are red and 20 plants are white. And that's it. Now, Hardy-Weinberg questions may ask you for any of the allele frequencies, any of the genotype frequencies, um, maybe even the number of individuals with a particular genotype, or even the phenotype frequencies. But if you start by organizing all variables, like I taught you, and start with the information that is given in the problem, you can work through any type of Hardy-Weinberg problem. Good luck, and I'll talk to you soon.